Let evening come. Let the light of late afternoon shine through the chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned in the long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless, so let evening come. Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I'm here with another installment of Poetry for Beginners. Uh, July's poet was Jane Kenyon. Jane Kenyon was an American poet who published mostly, I think, from, let's say, the 1960s to the 1970s. Um, she, Because she's a female American poet, her work inevitably ends up being compared with that of Sylvia Plath uh, and Anne Sexton. She did share some things in common with them. Um, she did write um, and explore issues related to depression and mental health, but on the whole, she was a lot less inward-looking uh, and more outward looking. Uh, she wasn't always just, con and I don't mean this condescendingly or dismissively, she wasn't always just exploring her own <clears throat> psychological experience, uh, but she could put herself in <clears throat> the minds of others and empathize with their experiences as well. In addition to that, uh, she did uh, write poems that referenced and were set in and explored the natural world uh, and its rhythms. And again, she did this, uh, unlike Sylvia Plath, she did this in oftentimes the simplest language possible. Jade Kenyon died of leukemia, I think, in 1992, and I believe she published something like four volumes of poetry. I really like Jane Kenyon's poetry, not all of it, of course, but there's just something about it. Maybe it's simpli maybe it's simplicity is what I like, but I, I just really liked it. So. The poem of hers I chose, which you heard me read, however well I did at the beginning of the uh, of the video, is called Let Evening Come. And to me, again, this is one of those things I like in poetry. It references the natural world, uh, but it is uh, very simple language and very simple themes. So just to kind of break it down stanza by stanza, in that first stanza we see the imagery of the setting sun. This is something that probably shows up in poetry throughout the history of poetry, but one of the things I think that's different here is that Kenyon is describing the effect of a setting sun on an interior space, on a hay barn, with the sun coming through the chinks in the barn and moving up the hay um, as the sun goes down. Uh, so I think that means, makes from the very beginning this kind of, it kind of signals this is an inwardly looking poem. This is a poem about the inner experience, even as it describes uh, the outward experience. In stanza two, she essentially compares the chirping of crickets as night falls with a woman's knitting needles. Just as, you know, I don't know what your grandmothers were like, but my grandmothers were usually busy all day long and they took up their knitting needles at night, uh, just as the crickets come out and chirp at night. And there's a definite reference here to the you know, I guess depending on who you are, the somewhat soothing or um, routine noise of crickets and then the clicking of knit knitting needles. The most arresting thing I think from stanza three is the image of the hoe who's left in the tall grass uh, to let dew collect on it. Uh, to me, this is clearly <clears throat> Kenyon again signaling that the work day has come to an end and we put work behind us. And as we do, uh, the night sky begins to reveal itself and the stars and the moon. Stanza four is nature itself kind of shutting down. The fox representative of wildlife goes to its den. The wind calms down um, and the day begins to settle into, into, into a more peaceful pattern as night approaches. Stanza five, I think, is really uh, one of the more interesting and one of the ones where we get back to maybe what the, the poem is actually about. Uh, and I think it leads really well into the closing stanza, stanza six. But in stanza five, Kenyon says, as to the bottle in the ditch, the scoop in the oats, 
to the air in the lungs, let evening come. I believe that's more or less what it says. I'm not reading it right now. Uh, those three things are containers uh, for things that give life. The bottle container for liquid uh, to drink, the scoop con contains oats to eat, and our lungs contain air which keep us alive. And notice we're letting evening come to all of them. The bottle is in the ditch. Its usefulness is used up. Um, the lungs are ceasing to uh, perhaps hold air um, and to serve their function, which then to me really gets to what the poem is about, which I think is more clearly revealed in stanza six, and that is that the poem is really about an acceptance of death, that death is a part of the natural process, that, you know, just like every day has to come to an end, every life has to come to an end, and just like there are comforts at the end of the day, like the crickets or the sandy warm den or the idea that your work is done, there are comforts uh, that come at the end of life and that perhaps we need not fear death any more than we fear the approach of nightfall. Anyway, there you go. Uh, that's my poetry for beginners about the work of Jane Kenyon. By the way, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. If I have, I'll just repeat it. The Poetry Foundation, which is accessible uh, to, through a simple Google search of any poet's name, has bi biographical information about poets and it contains usually a fairly significant selections, selection of the poems by that poet and you can read for free. Uh, a large uh, amount or a significant portion of a lot of poets work there. So I'll leave a link to that for Jane Kenyon down below in the show notes. Uh, look forward to your comments and as always, thank you for watching.